Hi, I'm Vicky and I'm going to take you pond dipping today. This is a really exciting activity, got something really special that I will definitely need. I'm going to take you over to our ponds and, and let's go and see what we can find. So pond dipping is really, really fun, but it can be quite wet. So I'm going to just go through a few things that will keep you nice and dry and also keep all the animals happy and what equipment you need. So for a pond dip, you always need a net. This is a net that you can get from the shop. So you can buy lots of different types of nets, but you can also make one and I'll put a little sheet on how to do that below this video. Always wash your hands after pond dipping, but before you go, just check that you've not got any little cuts on your hand. And if you do, you can cover them up with a little plaster and it just protects you from leptospirosis. And I'll put a little bit of information on that underneath this video. But don't worry too much about that, but just make sure you always cover up any cuts. Also, you need to make sure that you stay kneeling down. Now, if I was to stand up, and try and pond dip like that, it would be really easy for me to fall in. So I can make myself nice and safe by kneeling down. And you can have a little kneeling pad to protect your knees. So the pond at Brandon is a really, really special pond. And that's because we have something really, really exciting living in there. And that is the Greater Crested Newt. Now I'll show you that on my picture here. So this is a smooth newt and he's got a continuous crest. But the Greater Crested Newt is, has got a gap in its crest. And there is a picture of the Greater Crested Newt on my board over there. Now, because we have that new in here, it means that you need to have someone on the newt license with you. So I've got a special newt license that says we're allowed to dip in this pond. So always check before you dip. Now, the next thing you need to do is make sure you've got a bucket and you always need water in that bucket. And the water needs to be from the pond you're dipping with or river if you're doing a river dip. And that's because all the animals living in there need to stay wet because that's where they have their habitat and that's where they get everything they need. When you're dipping, you get your net, you get your water, you make sure everything's set up. And the best way is to dip your net in and do a nice figure of eight. So if you can draw a figure of eight like that for me, and that shows the direction of your net. Because if you get your net and go back, forward, back, forward, back, you catch them and they swim away and you catch them and you swim away. So a nice figure of eight means that you can catch all those animals. Once you've got them, you bring them out and pop them in your bucket and have a closer look. Right then, so we're gonna have a little pond dip. So remember, kneel down, hold onto a rail if you've got them or onto the floor, wherever you feel nice and safe. And then you need to make sure there's not too much weed in there. Now the animals live at the top the middle and the bottom of the pond. So you need to be going up and down and then you're gonna get as many different animals as possible. So they've all got their special microhabitat. So a nice figure of eight. You need to wash through to make sure you don't get too much weed in there. So all you need to do is bring over your net and very carefully empty it into your bucket of water. Okay, now I've been really careful not to get too much weed in there. If you do get too much weed in, you can very carefully scoop it off, but just don't leave it on the platform or on the side of the river or wherever you are. So you can do that with your fingers if you're feeling comfortable. Just be really careful not to kind of get too much with um, too many animals or knock anything off. Just give it a little wash and then anything like that can go straight back into the pond. And then you just need to wait for it to settle. If you look from a distance, you think, oh, I've got nothing in there at all, but you need to take a closer look. So I have obviously been pond dipping for a long time, so I can see things quite quickly, but you can have a little bit of help. So we've put some ID sheets underneath, which will help you find out what you've got. And also if you're really, really careful and use a small tub, you can very carefully just scoop things out so you can have a closer look. Try, and try not to use my fingers because it just makes your impact on these animals just not so much but this one is not playing ball there we go. come here aha there we are right i've got a lovely ram's horn snail in here so i can find him on my picture there and the best thing about a ram's horn snail is it's one of an easy thing to identify and you can see he's just got a swirl and if you put two of those swirls on either ear you look like a ram that's why it's called a ram's horn snail as you can see you can see him moving along the best way to observe animals not making too much of an impact on them but having a really good look anyway 
Right, let's try for something else. I can see something moving along the bottom here. Just getting my eye in. Oh, I've got him. I think I might have two. No, no, it's just the one. So I've got something really, really exciting here. One of my favourite pond creatures. So loads and loads of invertebrates start their life in the pond. And one of my favourite ones is the dragonfly. So dragonflies spend years and years and years in the pond before they finally emerge and uh, basically get their wings and become adults. So ponds, that's why you often find dragonflies flying around ponds. And this one looks absolutely amazing and we can have a closer look. So I've got a magnifying glass. I can have a closer look that way. And we can also use something called a microscope to have an even closer look. And because microscopes can see really, really, really teeny weeny things, you can actually see things that are not what we call visible to the naked eye. So this guy looks absolutely amazing. So using this clever bit of kit, we've got some amazing shots of this dragonfly larvae. So as you can see, you can see every single bit of its body, all its legs. This guy is a super predator, one of the top, the top predator in the pond. 95% success rate. We've also got the ram's horn snail and you can see it emerging from its shell very nicely. It's an amazing bit of kit. But even a magnifying glass lets you have a closer look. But why not have a really, really close look? Right, it's so important to make sure these animals go back into their natural habitat. So when you've finished all your pond dipping, you get your bowl and you very carefully, and not from a great height, all your animals back in. And then you need to make sure you give your net and your bowl, your bucket a really, really good wash out. And also, if you're moving to a different pond, you need to make sure you sterilize your kit because obviously if there's anything living in this pond, any kind of microbes or anything like that you don't want that to go to another pond so we always use the same kit in our pond and if we use any different ponds we always sterilize it so now we're going to play a little game all about adaptation and adaptation means a change that an animal's made to live in its habitat and it makes it perfect at living in that habitat so it can find everything it needs now lots of pond creatures have got adaptations to make them fabulous at living in the pond and these are some animals that we might find so we've got a pond skater a water scorpion, a dragonfly nymph, a greater water boatman, a screech beetle, a diving beetle, a mayfly larvae, and a case caddisfly. And now we're going to see what adaptations they have. I row myself along with my back legs using my legs like oars. So have a look which animal has got really long back legs. Now I hope you spotted the long legs on this greater water boatman. There is a lesser water boatman in too, but greater water boatmen swim on their backs and lesser water boatmen swim on their fronts. I store air under my wings, which I use to breathe, and it helps me float. Oh, who's got big wings they could store some air under? Now these guys are amazing. If you actually see one of these in a pond, in your pond net or pond dipping tray, you can actually see the silvery bubble. It's really cool. I breathe by drawing air from the surface of the water into my long tail. Ooh, which one could that have a look? Is there anyone that's got a long tail? Yep, that was right. You spotted the long tail on the water scorpion that it uses like a snorkel. I can walk, run and jump on the surface of the water. Who could that be? Yep, that was right. That was the pond skater with always on the surface. If you squeeze me, I'll screech because of all the air trapped under my wings. Hmm, screech. That's a good clue, isn't it? Well, I got this one, the squeak, screech beetle. That's why it's called the screech beetle. I live in the water for up to five years before turning into an adult. Now we did have a clue about this earlier. I bet you can guess which one this one is. 
I hope you all got this one. This is the one we found, isn't it? The dragonfly nymph. And I said it spent a long time in the pond, didn't I? I breathe using feathery gills, which are along the side of my body. Have a look down, which one's got feathery gills? Now these mayflies, very clearly you can see the gills and also they use their three tails and they can turn against the flow of the river and it stops them floating downstream. Very clever adaptation. I make myself a case from sticks and stones to protect my soft body. That's a clever trick, isn't it? And these case cabbages spin like a web which they pull all the material and if you find them in the bottom of a river where there's stones they have a stone body and if you find them in the bottom of the pond you also see them with vegetation around them and you can mistake them for a stick and often children in groups who come out and pond dip at Brandon don't spot them until the last minute. Really hope you enjoyed our pond dipping session today and it would be fabulous to see if you managed to find some things in your pond.